Hi there, my name is Jeremy Krug and welcome to another chemistry video in which we're going to be talking about how we describe our results in the science laboratory. Now there are some vocabulary terms that we use to describe our results in the science laboratory. Now let's take a look at this picture right here. Now we aren't talking about a measurement exactly, but a result. Here we have someone who threw a dart at a dartboard. And you can see that that dart is exactly on the bullseye, isn't it? It's on the place where it needs to be. It's correct. Well, since the dart is right on the bullseye, we say that this result is accurate. Now, accuracy is just defined as the closeness of our results to the true or correct answer. And so if you're in the laboratory and you're trying to analyze or trying to calculate something, you always are aiming for an accurate answer, aren't you? So accuracy is very important. Now let's take a look at another way we can describe our results. Let's take a look at these results. Here we have an archer and they have shot three arrows right into the bullseye. And the fact that we have three arrows that are very, very close to each other in the correct place tells us that they're not only accurate, they're also close to each other. Now, the fact that these results are consistent or that they're close to each other is called precise. And so these results that we see are not just accurate, they're precise. As we talk about precision, that refers to the consistency of our results, or as we sometimes say, the repeatability of our results. If we have precision, it gives us a certain level of confidence in the quality of our results. With that being said, it's important to realize that just because our results are consistent or precise, it's not a guarantee that our results are accurate as well. For example, take a look at this dartboard. Here we have three darts. They're all very close to each other. So we could say that these results are certainly very precise, but they're not on the bullseye, are they? And so they're not accurate. Now, sometimes this happens in the laboratory too. If we have results that are precise but not accurate, there's probably something going on. There's a chance that uh, someone is making the same mistake over and over and over again. Or it's also possible that there's a flaw in the equipment that we're using or perhaps the methodology of our experiment. So just because something is precise doesn't always mean that it's accurate as well. Although it's always good to be precise and accurate. How about these darts on the dartboard? Notice that they're all over the place. They're not really anywhere close to the bullseye and they're not really close to each other either. So they're not precise and they're not accurate. So these are the types of results we try to avoid. Now, how about this? This is a case that sometimes happens, not very often, but this sometimes happens. Notice that these results are not uh, precise, are they? They're all over the dartboard. However, however, if we take those five results and we average them out, they actually do average to be the bullseye. So here's a special case. So we can say this player actually is accurate, but would you want that player on your team? No, they're not really scoring too many points, are they? And so this is not precise, even though it's accurate. Sometimes we call that uh, good luck. Um, but this very, very rarely happens. Lack of precision indicates a lack of skill. And so it's very unusual that you'd have a case like this where you have accurate results, but not precise results. So as we say, very, very unlikely that this would happen. Now, how could you have a question like this on a test? Well, let's try this example right here. Albert measures the length of a book three times and gets these results, 38.45 centimeters, 38.42 centimeters, and 38.44 centimeters. The actual length of the book is 39.72 centimeters. Are Albert's measurements precise and are they accurate? Well, let's answer the first question first. Are Albert's measurements precise? I would say yes, because notice that his three measurements are very close to each other. In fact, there's very little variance. The only variance is in that last decimal place that he's reported, and even those are fairly close to each other. So his measurements are precise. But are they accurate? I would say, no, they're not. 
because even though his answers are close to each other, notice that they're well over one centimeter away from the correct answer. So here we have a case of precise but inaccurate results. Let's try another example. Sandra takes a reading of a burette three times and gets these results. 11.33 milliliters, 11.69 milliliters, and 11.10 milliliters. The actual reading of the burette is 14.37 milliliters. Are Sandra's measurements precise? Are they accurate? What do you think? Are her measurements very close to each other? I would say no, because notice that she has quite a bit of variance, not just in the last decimal place, but in the next to last decimal place as well. That shows me that her results are not precise. Are they accurate? No, they're not, because they do not average to get us anywhere close to the right answer. She's well over, well, about three milliliters off from the correct answer. So not precise, not accurate either. Let's try one more example. Ashley determines the mass of a pencil three times and gets these results. 8.43 grams, 8.45 grams, and 8.45 grams. The actual mass of the pencil is 8.44 grams. Are Ashley's measurements precise? Are they accurate? Well, are her answers close to each other? I would say yes. There's very little variance here, just a little bit in that last decimal place, and sometimes they're even spot on to each other. Are they accurate? I would say yes, because the average of her three answers gets us very, very close to the right answer. So yes, she's accurate, and she is precise as well. I hope you learned something about accuracy and precision with this video. If you did, please feel free to smash that like button. If you want to see more chemistry videos like this, both first year chemistry and AP chemistry, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I hope to see you back again where we can learn some more about measurement and chemistry together.